In this video, I'm going to do an unboxing and product review with a sound test on the Marshall Acton 2 Bluetooth. All right, so here it is. It's a fairly big box, just to give you an idea of what you're looking at. Uh, this is 38 centimeters by 22 centimeters, and the height is twin, just under 25 centimeters. All right. Okay, so there's the unit. You also get your power cable. Underneath here is the little getting started book, um, a quick start, and just some legal information. Now, just so you know, uh, this speaker requires you to use their app. So it actually says here, plug in, switch on app. So I'm gonna go through this with you and then I'll do the sound test. All right, so here is the unit. Uh, the device's size is 26 centimeters by 15. And the height of the table is, let's call it uh, 17 because this little switch here is above this horizontal plane. As you can see, okay, it gets plugged in over there. Uh, just to show you what's happening at the back here, just the standards and the compliance notice. There's a little service port here, so I've opened this up. It's obviously for firmware and things like that. There's the serial number, the model. Now what you'll notice is it does say 100 to 240 volts AC, 50 or 60 hertz. So that means this can be used in North America, it can be used in Europe, because you've got the varying power supply. All right, so that means you're just gonna be using a different cable, a country specific cable. It also says 36 watts. So the maximum power consumption is 36 watts. All right, just showing you underneath, you've got premium rubberized feet. And if you look there, uh, there's the, what would be a Torx nut, uh, screw. So this isn't just a regular screw that you can unscrew. This is Torx, and it looks like this is a high quality foot that is in metal. In uh, the, the structure of it is metal with a rubberizing on the outside. If you look at the back here, these are just regular screws. And there is a port. So when this uh, unit is being used, you'll see, feel some air here, and I can feel how it, uh, it, it actually curves in there. And if you look at how many screws there are there, it can give you an idea of the pressure that's building up in the chamber. So this is well designed. You can see many screws there to make sure there's no rattles. Right, let's look at the top face plate. Now you can see there's an aux in, so that means you can put in your 3.5 millimeter jack, and that could be 3.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter, maybe to a cell phone or to two RCAs or whatever uh, you want to use. Then it's got a press button here. It's got a tactile response. You can feel it when you press it. It's got a little binary response like on off. Uh, and there you can see it's Bluetooth, aux, and this is saying to you that's the source. Then you've got a volume knob, which does not have a start and end position. As you can see, um, what will happen is when you power it on, it comes to a certain point, and then it uses with that point as the reference. Uh, same as the bass and the treble. No starting and end point. It is relative to where it uh, powers on to. And I'll show you what I mean by that shortly. Then there's a play pause button and then to power it on, there you go. I'll just press and hold this and you'll see the little LED there comes on. And when it comes on, it makes a little sound. I'll just show you that now. There, I don't know if you heard that. And powering it on. There we go. A little jingle there. Right, this is the front. It says they established 1962. Um, I'm not sure the material, but this is very premium. There is no denying the uh, quality of this unit. This is a material, and I can feel the little spaces where the speakers would be. There's something, uh, there's something. I don't know if that's a port or a speaker. There's something, and there's something. So we've got one, two, three, four, and that's it. Looks like four spaces here. Okay, to get started with this, you need to download the app, the Marshall app, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, just so you uh, know the function of this, this is, while it's a Bluetooth speaker, it is not a portable speaker. For example, these are portable speakers. They have batteries inside. This Marshall has no battery. They do have a portable Bluetooth speaker, but this is not it. This is the Acton 2. All right, so to get started, you now download the app. Right, so you'll go to the Play Store, you'll search for Marshall. Right, there's the app, and you can see it's a 45 meg app, which is quite a big app for that. It's just to connect to your device. 
Uh, what you will know is it's not scored very high there you can see 2.2 stars right now that the app is installed you uh, click to the uh, agree to the terms you say next it wants your email address i say skip um i don't want to share my anonymous data uh, this seems quite elaborate just to play music to through a speaker right you've got to make sure the speaker is active so you've got to switch it on Right, so the Marshall is on and I say connect and as it connects it makes a little sound and then you'll see it in the list of your devices. There it's come up, Acton 2. Right, then you say pair. So there it's paired now, you can see and if I go back to the app You can see it's got a little status bar showing me music can play. And if I adjust the volume here, it works. And if I just show you what else is here, not much, just analytics if you want to share your data and then obviously email subscription and if you want to shop. So that's about it. Uh, just to show you the version of the app, it's 1.08. Okay, for the sound test, I'm going to use the AUX. I have been playing with the uh, Bluetooth, but to be accurate, I'm going to use the AUX uh, for the reason that I want it to be as accurate as possible. So I'm going to even use a, I'm actually going to use a audio interface and go straight from my PC, output here, uh, left and right into the Marshall. And I'm going to compare that to the Bluetooth from my memory. But more important is I prefer to use the hardwired rather than the Bluetooth. And I also have an SPL meter. And what this is, is this is a sound pressure level meter which measures the volume or the sound pressure level. And I've just set it to 80 to 120. It's on the fast range, so it might be changing quite quickly. Just to get an idea of the volume or the sound pressure level of the unit now keep in mind this should be done in an anechoic room which means that the should well should be done in an anechoic environment which means uh, somewhere where there aren't reflections off the walls and floor all right i haven't got that so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do a test here with the spl meter and uh, from all the reviews i've done in the past i can give you an idea of what the um sound is like on this marshall just keep it in mind that um, this should be one meter away and i'll just tell you a little bit about the room the room i'm sitting in is not a square or rectangular room there are hardly any walls that are parallel to each other so this is the type of room where you're not going to get a lot of standing waves uh, and base uh, traps what i will admit about this room is all the uh, surfaces are quite reflective so that should actually amplify the sound somewhat keeping in mind that there isn't a lot of material or dampening in the room so uh, as i said that should improve the 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 the, the volume a little bit all right, so I've set up the uh, line in, I've got the computer on, the volumes are at 85% both on the uh, computer sound card and on the computer's internal volume. Nothing is at maximum. I don't want to introduce any distortion. Uh, also, I have been listening to the speaker on the Bluetooth. I kind of know its uh, response already, so I know when it's at its uh, loudest point. And uh, here we go. We're going to start with female vocals, which I find is a good way to assess the sound characteristic or dynamic range of a speaker. It is the night of a vocals uh, just to show you the settings we have it on uh, bass kind of midway five I actually turned it down a bit and treble midway so let's call that a flat response keeping in mind that the uh, recording on the uh, computer is also flat there's no graphic equalization uh, 
at play on the computer so this would be called a flat response and if I uh, reduce the bass a little bit um, let's call it a vocal settings and increase the treble a little bit more just to give you an idea and I'll just comment on that now obviously I'm acutely aware that you aren't really hearing the response of the speaker it also has to come through the recording microphone so you'll just have to take my review uh, and if you know me or my other reviews you'll get to know my ears uh, just so you know I do have a master's degree in acoustics Just a commentary on the acoustics there. Firstly, I'd just like to note the volume was at its maximum. So uh, quite uh, impressed that there was very little distortion, even though it was at its maximum. Even if I turn the treble up, it didn't distort much at all. So I've got to say that it handled the female vocals above average. Now, in terms of this directional um, uh, nature, you see, if I walk to the side of the speaker, you are missing that stereo sound. It does fill the room quite well, but uh, unfortunately, Unfortunately, because it is facing one direction, you're not getting to, uh, you, you know, the speakers are somewhat directional. So if you walk to the back of the speaker, and if I'm here at the back, um, the sound does change quite a bit, but not in terms of the bass. The bass doesn't change, it's really just the treble. So the placement of the speaker is quite uh, specific in terms of the mid and treble. Make sure that uh, people aren't behind the speaker. Now, I'm not saying that it uh, it's a... Now, that critique is not unique to Marshall. It's just that when speakers can be put uh, quite a uh, distance apart, it tends to fill the room better. All right, the next uh, track I'm going to do is I'm going to put on some house music and just check the bass response. All right, so this is a South African DJ called Black Coffee. I'm going to put everything back to uh, flat. Uh, so that's going to be no uh, uh, equalization. And let's go for it. Maximum volume. So... Okay, so I just want to note something there. If you do try and uh, put a signal in larger than the device can uh, uh, take in, you will hear the clip. So just for your uh, reference, this kind of limits it. So you're not going to just blow the thing. Right, so it's got some voltage clipping built in, obviously to protect itself, which is a good feature. Okay, so uh, one of the things I like about it is it's almost uh, impossible to break it in terms of distortion. I did put the volume a bit high and try to almost overload the input amplifier here. And what it does is it goes into clipping, which is a good thing because it stops this thing from being over overloaded. So this thing, obviously, this Marshall is uh, well designed. Uh, I don't know if you heard the clipping there. Uh, the bass notes did change from doof doof to so that's uh, probably by design, which is actually a good thing. Okay, just to give you an idea on, about the bass. Now, it's definitely above average. Uh, it's quite uh, amazing how much bass is coming from here, from such a small uh, uh, speaker. And just keeping in mind that uh, the expectations on these speakers is very high because, you know, it, you know, there's so much competition in terms of brands. And uh, I'm just showing you those because those are, there are brands which are competing. Now, just to give you an idea about the bass. Now, I'm going to just... I cover this thing and you can just see the air movement. <laughs> A, there's a very active driver in here or maybe even two I don't know and you can actually feel the air coming through here so this is going to give you quite a good bass response and on the front you remember when I put the cover on here, you could see how this thing is breathing so you're gonna have a bass driver that is really moving a lot your deflection probably at least 10 millimeters okay for the next test let's put on some heavy metal uh, this is a heavy metal band called Candle Mass and uh, let's see what it sounds like. Okay, so immediately I could hear the clipping 
and what is happening there is uh, there is some DSP at work there and what it's doing is it's actually reducing some of the sound so it's losing that dynamic range what I mean by that is uh, when the heavy metal is being played it actually uses a lot more power because the the sound is, is being amplified across many frequencies across all the octaves because heavy metal is a very full sound and it's a quick way of seeing whether this device can handle that power output if you uh, are playing house music while then just on the bass notes doof doof that's when the the amplifier is working but heavy metal is on the bass notes and with so much uh, guitar and bass uh, being played you it's almost all the time so it actually overloads many amplifiers and I could hear that immediately so if you're going to listen to heavy metal at full volume you're going to hear that you will have to either turn the bass down or not listen to it at peak volumes <laughs> In fact, uh, when it gets loud, uh, when the, the, the song accentuates the, the loudness with the, with the bass note and the rest of the songs are very full, you can almost hear it going down in volume. So it's like, it's like the volume is being adjusted dynamically. Uh, the reason for that is to protect the speaker. You know, they've designed this for a long time. You can tell by the quality. This is really high quality and you could put everything on full you wouldn't break this thing even if you left it on for an hour at full you wouldn't this thing is well designed but what it will do is it's dynamically um, reducing the volume in order not to blow these uh, array of drivers here I mean here we go I'm just gonna put everything on full and as you can see <laughs> Um, and unfortunately it's happening here as well keep in mind I have this at full volume obviously uh, you, you're not going to do that you'll probably have it at 75% and the sound will be great but if you're going to put it on full volume you're going to find these dips in the sound in order to compensate for the amplifier and uh, not overrun the system all right in terms of the sound pressure level I saw a 105 uh, decibel there it is pretty loud um, but averaging on a hundred decibels I know Notice that when the bass hit, um, it didn't really affect the uh, sound pressure level, which tells me something as well that the bass wasn't able to build in the room. And considering this room does have very reflective surfaces as well, um, uh, but what I can admit is that the there are items in the room which uh, I usually vibrate or make a noise or rattle when I'm doing other tests with acoustic equipment. So I'll just show you. Right, so I do have a drum set in the room and as you can see there, there's a snare drum and when I'm testing little half fires and radios and things like that, I sometimes hear the snare going brr brr because it's rattling. Uh, in terms of this uh, Marshall, uh, it did do it from time to time. I think that the, the unit is very good and I'm going to give you my summary of this in a moment. Uh, now what you're looking at is a very old Marshall speaker and why am I showing you this? Because I am a Marshall fan. So you can see I've had this uh, this loudspeaker for more than 20 odd years. I still use it and I love the, the covering here. This vinyl that covers it. It's not just a cheap vinyl that you put on a headboard. This is strong stuff. I mean you can see this construction of this unit. I mean there, okay it's broken, the plastic is broken, but this handle I've used, I mean it's it's a very high quality. I'm very impressed with the Marshall stuff. I've chucked this in a trailer. It's fallen on the floor, but overall the sound is still very good. So my conclusion, this is very premium. What I like about it, as I've just shown you on that other Marshall loudspeaker is this covering. I like the fact that these knobs don't wiggle. You know, sometimes you get knobs, knobs that, you know, you turn them and you feel like it's, um, it's something that is is or plastic you can see this thing is solid it, it doesn't uh, wobble as you turn it this little switch here this is how it was in the old days when you switch things on there's these type of uh, resist uh, kind of friction switch you know you press it and it offers you a bit of friction a uh, very strong device you can see look at this face plate I mean this is premium stuff Okay, the silk screening, wonderful. They put a lot of money into the aesthetics and it shows. Even the feet being high quality rubber. And why do I say that? Because I've had uh, radios come in here and I do reviews and you, you put a little sticker here on the radio or the mini half and you stick the foot on there and then after a while it comes off, you find it on the desk when it's been moved a bit. No, no, not here. This is screwed in. This is probably, um, you know, wood. Oh, well, I'm not sure, but it definitely does not feel like any plastic is in this 
uh, uh, little uh, Bluetooth uh, speaker system. So overall, in terms of the construction, I say it's outstanding. In terms of the design, well, look, I don't enjoy the old-fashioned styling, but I get it. They've done it very well. The, the rubber, the two, the rubber versus the the um, alloy here. I mean, even on the top, it's got. Look at that. Look at that in the light. I mean, this is really premium. You can't blow this thing. Even if you gave it, lent it to someone to use for a whole weekend, they couldn't destroy it. So you're okay with that in terms of if they try and play it too loud, this thing will protect itself. I can hear that it will uh, lower the volume as the amplifier gets hot. You'll probably find that it automatically adjusts the gain. So it's got an automatic gain control. The speaker works very hard. Why I say that is you can, you know, you can see that the woofers inside, they are made to work. There's a lot of movement. Um, even having said that, there's no rattle. It's not like I'm hearing any noise from this at all. So would I buy this? My answer is no, because at this price point, um, this is not something that I would like. I think at this price point, it should be louder. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, this is Marshall. Marshall appeals to people who also like alternative music and alternative music is in rock and heavy metal and I didn't feel that the heavy metal uh, you know the speaker did the heavy metal uh, much justice even on the house music uh, the clipping came in too soon I feel like it could be louder I feel like this is a very good attempt uh, for most people they wouldn't even notice that they wouldn't hear that clipping and please most of these devices also uh, go in for that in order to protect it so why I'm saying that is because this could be a bit louder for this price point if I'm going to spend this type of money and if I compare it to other radios that I've um, reviewed they're quite a bit louder and in terms of the sound quality this is good the female vocals was uh, was above average um, I had no problem and if you are at the plane of the speaker the sound is very good like if you're listening to it it doesn't sound like it's digital it sounds clear it sounds full the highs are high um, as I said, if it's loud, there are some limitations. So overall, a very good sounding speaker, a very premiumly built speaker, um, a very well designed in terms of the aesthetics. So now you've got basically everything somebody would want. But for me, uh, the, the, the cost is too high. So